Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for um, allowing Grosvenor to present to you tonight. Um, we are certainly uh, very excited at the progress that's been made in the last year. Uh, very excited to be so close to finalizing an agreement to uh, assemble the entire block. And what a great opportunity that is. We, um, I had the opportunity to address this crowd at this event last year, and I made a commitment on behalf of Grover that uh, we would build a world-class project on a world-class site, and uh, something that meets the needs and desires of the community, not only Ambleside, but the broader West Van community, and uh, I commit to that again on behalf of Grover. That's not changed. Um, Ambleside needs to be revitalized. Uh, we know that it needs to be revitalized. I think this is a great opportunity uh, of a scale and prominence of a building to really kickstart that revitalization. So that's also very exciting for us. We're really looking forward to moving on now. Um, we can finalize this agreement on the 5th. That um, will be into the detailed design and the rezoning process, which will be phenomenal. Um, as alluded to, uh, we've had a pretty extensive public engagement process over the last year uh, with the ideas fairs in the spring mostly. We've received a lot of feedback from the community and we're certainly going to use that feedback to guide our design and our vision for the property. Um, we heard loud and clear what people want in Appleside, and we're going to see that through. Um, of, of course, uh, retail is going to be an important component of this project and, and, and an important component of the project's success. If um, through our innovative design and public realm treatments and, and thoughtful tenant mix, uh, we can create a successful retail environment, uh, that means people are coming to Appleside. And if people come to Ambleside, that means they're going to be revitalized. There's going to be a spillover effect, and they're going to go to other parts of Ambleside. And it'll really build a lot of momentum, which is really exciting for us that um, you know, we can be a part of that kind of change. So, um, Michael Mortensen, who's our senior development manager, who a few of you I'm sure have seen around, and was really the driving force behind our community engagement over the last year, and will be the real driver of our rezoning process for us. He's very talented, and um, is very passionate at what he does, so I think I think he'll serve the community very well. Uh, so he's going to present momentarily uh, some of the work that we've been done, doing in the last year, and then uh, following that, James Chang, our esteemed architect, will uh, show you through uh, a presentation on the PowerPoint about uh, some of the vision that we have going forward. So again, I'd like to thank the chamber for giving Grover the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'd like to express uh, how pleased we are and excited we are that uh, we're involved in such a, an important project for West Vancouver. And uh, we know that that comes with a lot of responsibility. And we take that seriously and uh, humbly. And we are absolutely committed to uh, producing something that we can all be proud of. So with that, Michael, if you want to leave us here. Thank you. So um, as, as uh, many of you know, if you participated in our Ideas Fairs over the spring, we've been very busy. It's been about a year since uh, we were here last. I think when Mogner was negotiating the memorandum of understanding with the district uh, on, the, on the purchase of the uh, district's lands on the 1300 block. So we've been, um, just to give you a, bit, a brief overview, the district owns the land in yellow, and Grover has purchased all of the land in blue, or at least acquired all of that properties under contract. And, uh, and for years, the district has been engaged in um, policy and planning for the block, for the, uh, for the whole of Ambleside, um, culminating in the uh, Town Centre strategy of 2008. Um, since we were here last, we have been to, I believe, about 11 different, we've hosted 11 different um, public involvement uh, meetings, uh, charrettes, and workshops, uh, and that's taken essentially most of last spring and summer. Ideas Fair 1, 2, and 3. I'll kind of summarize them quickly. But, um, but on February 6th, the uh, District Council decided to uh, proceed with the proposed sale of the 1300 block and take that forward for public comment and feedback before making a decision on that in, in March. And um, part of that is the feedback from you. And so I think what we're encouraging people to do is they have an opinion on the redevelopment of the 1300 block in particular, to make sure that you make your, your wishes and your feedback, your ideas known to your council. So when we took possession of the, of the Imperial Oil site, uh, that was in December of 2010, 
I was, I was stopped by a Vancouver, uh, West Vancouver police officer at about 11.30 at night on the site. Um, I dropped a friend off after a hockey game, and I found the gates wide open, and uh, Imperial had, had took everything, including the locks. And I was standing around on the site in December 2010, looking at this vacant lot. It had been vacant for 10 years, 14 years, I'm not sure exactly. But I thought immediately then and there that we had to do something different uh, with, this, with this lot. We had to do something that shows how you can use art and culture and place making to transform a place, and even just in microcosm. And that was the idea behind the, the, uh, the sculpture, the Jean Plancy sculpture that you see at the north end of the site, and the blue trees at the south end. Um, kind of culminated, in, in, I think, in that, in that moment for me. And uh, it's been very successful. I think what's interesting about it is that it took us about a month or two, but it completely transformed a small portion of the site. And that idea found its way into people's thinking as we did the ideas fair. So people said, we like it, we want to keep it. Let's do something with it. So um, as we brought that forward, the first thing we did actually was to go and talk to um, businesses in Ambleside. So we had our first ideas fair. We invited um, all of the businesses from Ambleside to come to a workshop with Stanley King uh, and James Chang and talk about um, what, they, what their vision was for the site. We have learned a ton from people in West Vancouver about their ideas, their hopes, their aspirations for the site, um, and, and their concerns. I think people are concerned about the vitality of Ambleside. And we got that from the, the, uh, the people who own businesses in the, in the community, that they want to see life back to the, com to the community. The second one we did, um, and this is a little atypical, is that we, we actually went out to schools to find what the youth were thinking. So we went out to West Vancouver Secondary and took the same program out to those people. What do you, what do you guys need? You know, and these are your kids, my kids. Um, they're the future of West Vancouver. And what they told us was that they were looking for a legitimate third space. They wanted a cafe that was open late, that had wireless, where they could meet their friends, do their homework, socialize. Legitimate social space. They wanted a living room, just like I think all of you want a living room, but perhaps for different reasons. You might want to go have a glass of wine. <laughs> we went out to the elementary school, went out to Pauline Johnson, and ran the same program, which is very fun, because you know what those kids told us? They wanted some really simple things. They wanted things where they could play. They wanted water features. You know, they, they wanted um, a creative space. So when we're thinking about this place, we're not just thinking about the people who are living here right now, we're thinking about people a generation or two from now. When you build a building, I don't know if you know this, but concrete gets stronger every year for like two centuries. And so when we're making a decision about the 1300 block, we're not making a decision about today, we're making a decision about 200 years from now, because that building will still be standing. So these kids were, they were fabulous, they were so animated, and they're standing in kind of a, that's such a good time. And then we went out to the community, and we had our ideas fairs in the, uh, in the uh, new community center, a new facility, and uh, it was just a great time talking to people, again, getting, getting people's ideas on a variety of subjects. We asked people to envision a day in the life of the block, morning, noon, night, evening, and people really expressed the desire for, again, third space, a place, the neighborhood, sort of living room, um, housing. They, uh, they expressed a desire for sustainability, and um, they, they wanted to create a building. And people came out in droves and talked about art and culture. And I think part of it too was, was our initial work on the, um, the Greenway that we did, the Art Greenway. So some of the ideas uh, clustered around activities. Uh, and you know these well, because you, you, are, you are from West Vancouver. You, you, you live the West Vancouver lifestyle, walking, being outside, the connection to nature. Um, a lot of great design ideas, including um, this idea of a galleria that's covered, that has 365 day a year use, where um, despite you know, the weather today, you could actually be outside, but be inside. Uh, sit down with your friends, have a coffee, have a meal, uh, window shop, that type of thing. Um, and then I guess uh, also, I think a, a desire for uh, what I call hyper-localism. People don't want, they don't want the typical stuff. They want something that's truly authentic and of West Vancouver. They want world class, but they don't want it from somewhere else. You know, it's got to really reflect the community. So we got a lot of information from people. The second ideas fair we did, we had it again in the, in the, uh, in the uh, gallery of the community center, and it was uh, really an exercise in terms of taking those use, form, character, and talking then about how do you, what kind of building should we build. And uh, there's James Chang working with people with a scale model of the buildings. And 
and got a lot of information from people there. Um, here's an example of one of them. So part of part of what we got was this idea of um, not high rises. I think people thought high rises were kind of antithetical to the the character in MSI, but people started stacking up some of these little building blocks into into mid rises, terrace building forms, with the Galleria down the middle. Um, you can see the Galleria running through the middle of the block. The block is 600 feet long almost. It really is two blocks. So to, to make a decent building out of this, we actually have to break it into two. And the idea of putting a pedestrian connection, I think Jane Chen will talk a lot about. Uh, so yeah, so we decided to scrap the idea of a tower, really explore you know, concepts of mid-rises, move that pedestrian gallery through the middle um, as a result of our idea space. Where are we going with the process? So on March 5th, the council will consider the proposed sale of the 1300 block. Um, while they're doing that, we're busy preparing a rezoning application and trying to give all of our plans. Where are we going from here? Now, should con council decide to sell us the land, we would then come forward in, uh, in 2012 with a rezoning application with full public process. Um, that would probably take much of the year. We're hoping that we, we could conclude it by the end of the year or early into 2013, which would then lead the way for us marketing, leasing, Actually doing the construction. So it's a very exciting for us. It's a very significant project, and uh, we are, I think, as James uh, Patello noted, very, very humbled by it. It's, it's. You don't often get the opportunity to redevelop a full block, so it's very, it's a transformational opportunity. And that's what we've done throughout our, our history. Uh, most recently in in, um, in Vancouver at Eighth and Canby, we developed the rise. It's a different building, a different building type. But that building won uh, the 2009 Urban Land Institute Global Award for Excellence. We were one of, I think, 10 firms in the world to get an award for mixed use development. And if you go there, you'll notice how it's activated Canby Street. It's transformed a really key node of the city into, I think it's now probably the third largest retail node in Vancouver. But it's done it in a way that melds fine grain retail, active street front uses, um, good architecture. A green roof, there's a community garden on top. You wouldn't even believe what's up there. It's amazing. And um, we have a history and a tradition of that, and we're going to continue that as we move forward. So with that, I'll turn it over to James Chang, who's going to talk a little bit about some of the principles of our design. Thank you very much. Uh, just waiting for the slide. It's, it's a great honor for me, and as Mayor Mike Smith said, it was uh, a lot of pressure on me, but I felt good about it because I used to work for Arthur Erickson and I met Ron Tong, and I felt they had already set the examples for us to follow, so it makes my job a lot easier. Um, to begin with, oh, I'm going to <coughs> revitalizing Ampleside is a big um, challenge for us, but I don't think it is really a challenge because Ampleside has always been here. It's just waiting to happen, and we're just very fortunate to have this opportunity to get a kick started. So it will be a comprehensive development as new users will bring in residents, customers, and will integrate art, culture, design, and placemaking. I think I would stress placemaking. I think it's what Mike was mentioned is probably the most important thing. Uh, we need to connect Marine Drive to the waterfront, improve pedestrian streetscapes, and create the third space as Michael's talked about. Next, please. And to do that, we'd like to show you a little bit of the site plan. You can hear one? Yeah. First is the gateway into Ambleside. So whatever we do at that corner has to reflect that. Secondly, to create a walking environment on Bellevue. Because as I observed, and we, we all know on a sunny day, there are tons and tons of people walking both on Bellevue and Argyle. So to create a new place where people are comfortable to walk and to hang out is very important. A 13th Street. A connection to the park and access to the beach. 14 is more important because it is a pedestrian link already established to the waterfront. And the central space uh, create a shortcut to connect Marine Drive to the waterfront. And finally, the retail opportunities all the way around. By creating the central space, we actually increase the amount of retail space on the ground. Next, please. And then the central space with a covered roof will create a, a uh, all weather protection. So this is what you have now, basically parking lot, the, the retail opportunity. 
and the public realm. And we're envisioning Bellevue is going to be like a European plaza. And on special occasions, you can actually close it for special events, so you don't have to have cars going through. Next. Um, Bellevue as a pedestrian promenade. Um, as you can see right now, the railroad track is about three or four feet higher than the street. So one of the proposals we're doing is leveling the new street to the railroad track. So when you sit down at the, like if you're going at Crimmer now, you're sitting below the railroad track, you can't really see the water. By leveling it, you will get this view. So everybody uh, walking or sitting will get to enjoy the, the ocean. Next. And this is actually something confirmed by the Ideas Fair. This is some of the sketches from the fair. People visualizing a walkable street with a railroad track level, benches and so on. And on the plaza, there will be opportunities for sidewalk cafes, events, and so on. Next. Of course, weather protection is important. This is a, an example in Vancouver, Marina Side Crescent, where you have retail on the ground restaurants and so on, terraces and townhomes on top. Eyes on the street and creating walkable environments for everybody. Next. Um, 13th Street is the gateway to Ambleside. So currently, you can see as you come down, you have to elevate to get across the railroad track. Next, please. You do a beautiful park on one side, but to uh, when you're looking back. Next. Uh, oh, I guess I missed the slide going look at the other way. But anyway, you can visualize. 14th Street has is what we consider art and culture link. It's um, as you can see, just by planting two rows of trees and adding the sculpture, it transformed that corner. And we are envisioning there will be additional open space similar to this size when the project is built. So this concept will remain. <coughs> and of course, lighting at night is very important, both in terms of creating vibrancy as well as security. Next. And some of the examples. So as Michael said, once we planted those trees, people adopted them. And they incorporated them into their ideas, what they like to see. And of course, that will provide a linkage for what you have started already, to the waterfront sculpture, the gallery, for public to enjoy. And then the mid block area, we see currently you have no idea. If you're walking on Marine Drive where the water is, it's all blocked. Next. And by creating a central spine, opening up, so even for people driving on Marine Drive, just passing through, they can actually see the water, and it becomes a gathering place for the community. Thanks. And historic examples, as well as the ideas from your neighbors, talking about how to cover it, what kind of feeling it should have. And the size that we're talking about is about the same as the size of the community center. Thanks, please. Um, and then a vibrant ground plane. It's very important about the retail and keeping people here. Currently, Marine Drive sidewalk is very narrow. Some of the businesses are not doing very well. Next. Um, what we're envisioning by elevating the street level to the railroad track, it makes Bellevue into a de facto plaza public open space. And currently, as you can see, you're sitting below the railroad track. And the new idea is there's a wider sidewalk, elevated, you maintain your view, and it connects well served by transit and cars and bicycle. Next. So you can, you can get this kind of more vibrant streetscape. Next. And we're encouraging the retail to actually engage the street. It can spill up onto the street. So we're actually pulling our building back a little bit so that people can actually have sidewalk cafes or display their merchandise on the street. Next. And on the Bellevue uh, Public Plaza, we could have water features, we have event space, things like that. And the architecture is the most favorite part of, uh, that I'm interested in, is also the green design. Uh, Arthur Erickson already sets lots of examples, both in West Van and in Vancouver. That, and this is the building he did in Victoria. You can see the step terrace in form. Next. And then the law court with the greening of the trees and the edges. So he was actually way ahead of his time in terms of sustainable ideas and green ideas. So we would like to incorporate those into our design as we go forward. And that would include you know, not just visually green, but stormwater management, the planting, um, the rain gardens, and the street lighting. And of course, the essence of West Coast architecture, the inside-outside relationship, and the use of water elements. 
So that's sort of where we're heading. And as you can see, the summation of the form we decided tau form is not appropriate. The concave form we also felt wasn't appropriate because it will overwhelm the streets. By putting the mass towards the center, it actually reduces the apparent bulk. It actually creates more views for the people behind us. So that's where we're at. Thank you very much.